بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد يعطيه مجن رحمه الله تعالى باب قول الله تعالى حتى إذا فزع عن قلوبهم قالوا ماذا قال ربكم قالوا الحق وهو العلي الكبير لعاثة الشيخ محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى he mentioned this chapter the chapter that he has titled with a verse or a portion of a verse from the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah he says حَتَّى إِذَا فُزِّعَ عَنْ قُلُوبِهِمْ referring to the angels قَالُوا مَاذَا قَالَ رَبُّكُمْ قَالُوا الْحَقِّ وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْكَبِيرُ so much so that when fear is banished from the, the hearts of the angels and the angels they say what is it that your Lord has said they say the truth meaning Allah has said the truth and he is the most high and the most great so if we see in the arrangement in the order the author he has said in these chapters in the previous chapter the author he has clarified from the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, Ayushrikuna ma la yakhluku shay'an wa hum yukhlaqun wa la yastafi'una lahum nasran wa la anfusahum yansurun. The last chapter the author he had clarified with many evidences and proofs clearly that the only one that is worthy of worship is the one who has created all things and given everything its shape and its form and the one who is providing for all of the creation entirely and the one who is disposing of the affairs of the entire creation, and the one who the dominion and the command is, is in his hand alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the only one worthy of worship, and everything besides him and that is worshipped besides him, no matter how great or lofty, or how noble or honorable, that these things are, are created, and they themselves cannot create anything, and they are not able to help anyone, except by the permission of Allah, nor could they even help their own selves. So we see that the author, he has mentioned the previous chapter, and this is general and all-encompassing proof that anything that is created from the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not worthy of worship. It's not worthy of worship for the fact that itself is created and provided for, and for the fact that itself is under the command and the decree and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, this is very clear. Uh... The, 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 the one who is worthy of worship is the Creator. And Allah, He mentioned in His book in many places like this, O mankind, worship your Lord, the one who created you. The one who created you. And there are many evidences in this manner. Likewise, clarifying that the one who is worthy of worship, He is the Creator. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this chapter here, the author, he follows that previous chapter up now with mentioning something that is specific from those things that are created and that are uh, that have been worshipped besides Allah Azza wa Jal that are very great and very noble, rather from the greatest of the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal and from the strongest and the most uh, amazing of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels, the angels, khuliqat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that the angels, they are created from light. And likewise, the angels, they are from the uh, affairs of the unseen. And uh, these are the, from the issues of al-umur al-ghaybiyya, the affairs of the unseen. And likewise, they have been worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the author, he is clarifying with these evidences in this verse here, and the uh, hadith that he will mention, Rahimahullah ta'ala that likewise even though these uh, angels they are great and amazing in their creation and uh, they have been given many different shapes and forms and they have also been entrusted with um, different affairs and they are very strong and powerful likewise 
but all, all, all with all of this they are not worthy of worship with all of this they are not worthy of worship and in reality we see from this verse that the author he mentioned in the, in the title of the chapter hatta idha fuzia an qurubihim referring to the angels and we will see in the narrations the author he will mention this is in reference whenever the revelation is being revealed whenever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would speak the revelation to jibril then at this time the angels they will uh, they will become unconscious and they will fall in prostration out of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, whenever they, uh, the fear is removed from their heart, whenever the fear is removed from their heart, what do they say? They say, what did your Lord say? And they say, some of them, they say this. Uh, and, uh, and then they say, and they, they say, he says the truth. And this is because they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala هو الحق ولا يقول إلا حق That Allah is the truth and He does not say except for the truth قالوا الحق They said He said the truth أي قال أي قالوا قالوا قال الله الحق This is what it means They said Allah He said the truth وهو العلي الكبير وهو العلي الكبير And He is the most high and the most great He is the most high subhanahu wa ta'ala and the most great العلي له العلو الذات والقهر والقدر سبحانه وتعالى He is high and lofty in His essence and He is above the throne. He is above the heavens, above His creation, above the magnificent throne, above His, cre his creation entirely in a manner befitting His majesty. سبحانه وتعالى He is high. He is high and lofty. He Himself in His essence سبحانه وتعالى He is high above the throne. تبارك وتعالى And likewise, his status, his rank, subhanahu wa ta'ala, alu al-qadr, that he is the highest, al-ali, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there's no one above him. There's no one above him. And likewise, alu al-qahr, that he is the highest, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and no one is above him with regards to authority and power. With regards to authority and power. So he is the, he is al-ali, subhanahu wa ta'ala, a clear indication that he is the only one worthy of worship. There is none above him. Tabarak wa ta'ala. There is none above him. Tabarak wa ta'ala. Al-Zahiru laysa fawqahu shay. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Qahiru fawqa ibadihi. Tabarak wa ta'ala. Al-Kabir. Al-Kabir. Yani akbar. Subhanahu wa ta'ala min kulli shay. Wala akbar minhu. Wa huwa akbaru min kulli shay. Wa a'zamu min kulli shay. And he is the greatest and he is greater than all things. Al-Kabir. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is nothing greater than him. He is, he is the greatest and he is greater than all things. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there is none that is greater than him. The point of the author, uh, Rahimahullah ta'ala, in mentioning this, this verse in this, in this chapter, in this manner like this, is to clarify that uh, from those things that are created, that had been pre mentioned previously in the last chapter, that are not worthy of worship, specifically the angels, the angels of Allah Azza wa Jal. That these angels, they are from those things mentioned previously in the previous chapter that are created. And that they themselves cannot create. And that they cannot aid or support or help anyone except with the permission of Allah. Nor can they uh, help themselves. Nor can they help themselves except with the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. Therefore, like the rest of the creation, they're not worthy of worship. So the author is clarifying this in this great detail. And if we see that these angels, how strong they are and how amazing they are in, in their creation and how great they are and, and the likes uh, in their creation and in their actions and, and the occupations that they perform and that they've been entrusted with, that these are amazing affairs and that these angels, they're noble and they're honorable and also they have ability and they're strong. But along with all of this, they're not worthy of worship. Along with all of this, they're not worthy of worship. So if this is the case, then the author is clarifying that anything that is lesser than that from the creation, for example, the graves and the people in the graves or the so-called awliya, they're not having the rank as like the angels. And they don't have the ability like the angels. And they don't have the nearness to Allah like the angels. And if the angels themselves, they're afraid of Allah. And they fall down in prostration and they pass out and become unconscious whenever the revelation is revealed. 
And whenever the fear is removed from their heart, they say, What did your Lord say? And they said, kabir, Praising Him and glorifying Him, afraid of Him, and frightened, terrified, and humbling themselves before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their Creator. If this is the case with those mighty and great creations, then that which is lesser than them, from the people in the graves, and those who worship the trees, and those who worship the idols, and those who worship the stones, and those who worship the prophets, and everything else, all of them likewise, they're not worthy of, of worship. If these great angels are not worthy of worship, then the rest of the creation that are lesser than them, likewise, they're not worthy of worship. They are not worthy of worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has mentioned about His angels. He says, جَعِلِ الْمَلَائِكَةِ رُسُولًا أُرِي أَجْنِحَةٍ مَثْنَى وَثُلَاثَ وَرُبَعَ يَزِيدُ فِي خَلْقِهِ مَا يَشَاءَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned that He has made the angels messengers and that they have wings. Two, three, and four, and he increases in his creation as he wills. And he increases in his creation as he wills. And the angels they have wings and they're messengers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has has created. There are messengers from the angels and there are messengers from mankind. But these are the messengers from the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them with wings. He has created them with wings. Some of them have two, some of them have three, some of them have four, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he increases and his creation as he wills tabaraka wa ta'ala likewise it has been uh, narrated authentically on the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he mentioned adina li an uhaditha bi an uhaditha an malakin min malaikatillah min hamalat al-arsh min hamalat al-arsh the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said that I have been allowed to, I have been allowed to narrate to you and to speak about an angel from the angels of Allah Azza wa Jal, from the carriers of the throne and from the bearers of the throne. This is the narration of Jabir ibn Abdullahi radiallahu anhuma, and it is in Sunan Abi Dawood. This narration is authentic. Wadilah al-hamd. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, likewise, we benefit from this narration in that we see that the angels they're not worthy of worship and likewise the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam he's a messenger for mankind but likewise he is under the power of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's under the authority and the command of allah and he cannot help he cannot himself sallallahu alayhi wasallam create rather he's created and he cannot aid or help except with the permission uh, of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he says here udhina li I have been allowed to uh, and malakin min and malakin min I have been allowed to to speak about an angel from the angels of Allah min hamalatil arsh from the carriers of the throne and here we see that in this narration the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he will describe in detail the description of this one angel the description of this one angel Naam, he says, إِنَّمَا بَيْنَ شَحْمَةِ أُذُنِ إِلَىٰ عَدِقِهِ مَسِيرَةُ سَبْعِمِيَةِ عَامِ He said that verity from the, his earlobe to his shoulder is the distance of 700 years. And he's traveling 700 years. This is an indication of the great size, the great size of this angel. This is one angel that the distance to travel between its earlobe and between its shoulder is seven hundred years. Along with this, this is an, uh, the proof here and the evidence here is to realize how great this creation is in its size, and that it's that is how close and honorable to Allah, a bearer and carrier of the throne. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He mentioned about His angels. حَتَّى إِذَا فُزِّعَ أَنْ قُلُوبِهِمْ قَالُوا مَاذَا قَالُوا رَبُّكُمْ That whenever, and to the extent that whenever the fear is removed from their hearts, حَتَّى إِذَا فُزِّعَ أَنْ قُلُوبِهِمْ أَيْ أُزِلِ الْفَزَعَ أَنْ قُلُوبِهِمْ Whenever the fear and the terror is removed from their hearts, then they say, what did your Lord say? And at the time of the revelation, whenever Allah speaks to Jibreel, and, the, and the, this, the, this is heard, they fall out. And unconscious in prostration and whenever they the fear is removed from the heart this is what they asked this is what they ask so we see that uh, this is an indication of the greatness of the angels and likewise an indication that they are still not worthy of worship that they are still not worthy of worship 
Even we see the greatest of the angels, Jibreel, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he saw him. He saw him in his, his, his form that he was created in. And it's been narrated by Abdullah bin Mas'ud and radiallahu anhu. And it's collected by Imam Ahmed. And it's been declared Hassan by Sheikh Al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala. That Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, Ra'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Jibreelah fi suratihi. That the, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw Jibreel in the form that he was created in. In the form that he was created in. Lahu sit. He has 600 wings. He has 600 wings. Jibreel, he has 600 wings. He says, Kullu junahin minha qad sadd al -ufuk. Every single one of these wings has completely, entirely blocked out the horizon. And he from, how, from, from the great size uh, of Jibreel in, in the form that he's created, he has 600 wings and he is completely, with his wings, entirely blocked the horizon. Wherever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he would look, he would see Jibreel. He would see Jibreel Alayhi Salam. He had completely uh, blocked out the horizon. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Yes, Kutu min Janahihi Min at Tahawidi wa Durri wa Riyakut Ma Allahu bihi Alim. That he said that there were all these different wonderful colors and pearls and rubies and the likes falling from his wings, dripping from his wings, falling from his wings, that only Allah knows the reality of. And in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he seen the angel Jibreel like this in his form that he was created in. But all of this is to clarify the, the great magnificence and the, and the huge size and the greatness of the, of the angels and their creation. But likewise, they are afraid of Allah and they obey Allah. They do not disobey Allah. And they don't disobey subhanahu wa ta'ala what they have been commanded. That they are obedient to Allah and they fear Him. And that they are obedient to Allah and they fear Him. There's another evidence in this verse that the author has mentioned that clarifies that the angels, they're not worthy of worship. And that is in the statement here, Hatta إِذَا فُزِّعَ أَنْ قُلُوبِهِمْ Referring to the angels that whenever the fear and the terror is, re and, and is removed from their hearts. Whenever it's removed from their hearts. So it, what we understand from this is the angels, they have hearts. They have understanding. Uqul, likewise. Malaika, laha, qulub, wa uqul. Naam. And likewise, yusibuhum al fazia Yusibuhum al fazia al khawf. Naam, that they become, they, sometimes they become afraid. And likewise, sometimes they become unconscious. And this is what is in reference here, that whenever the revelation is real, revealed to Jibreel, and the angels hear that, they fall unconscious. They fall unconscious in prostration. And whenever the fear is removed from their heart, this is what they ask. What did your Lord say? So, <clears throat> Al-Faz'a, the, uh, the ulama, they mentioned that this is Al-Khawf. It means fear. Al-Faz'a, it means fear. Faz'a, yafza'u. Uh, it means to is to be afraid, but it's a different type of, of fear. And the ulama they mentioned uh, that al faza it is al khawf al mufajir. It is sudden fear, like the one that is he he is uh, he is uh, surprised and, and then he is turned to fear out of surprise. He's scared, and he's he he's being scared. I mean, maybe one moment a person will be. Uh, feeling safe and then something will surprise him from behind for example and then this fear that comes at that time from being surprised and then being afraid from from that this is called al-fazi'ah that's the difference between al-fazi'ah and al-khawf so that means that the one who yusabu uh, bil-fazi'ah the one that he is afflicted with fazi'ah that means he he doesn't know everything because if he knew everything then this thing that's coming from uh, where he is not perceiving would not be able to be afraid of him, rather he would be a no, he would know of it. But this is not the case of the angels. Rather the angels they do not know what's going on entirely. They do not oh, they do not know all things. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma alamtana the angels they said, O oh, glorified are you, we have no knowledge except that which you have uh, informed us or taught us. So the fact that the angels can be uh, scared and afraid in this manner that their hearts can be afflicted with this type of fear this sudden fear then this is also an indication that they're not worthy of worship that they're not worthy of worship but we know that the angels they are the noble 
creation of Allah that they are noble slaves and servants of Allah and they are great in their size and their status but uh, along with this greatness they are not greater than Allah Allah Ali Al Kabir Allah He is the most high Subhanahu wa Taala and there is none above Him and He is the most great Subhanahu wa Taala and there is nothing and no one greater than Him so therefore even these great angels they are not worthy of worship this is the point of this chapter to clarify in detail just as the chapter that has preceded was to mention in general everything that's created is not worthy of worship an example from that specifically the angels an example from that is spe specifically the angels and we know that the angels they're they have been worshipped besides Allah Azzawajal. they have been worshipped besides Allah Azzawajal. so they're not worthy of worship and this is for many reasons from them that they do not create anything but rather themselves they are created and likewise they do not own anything and have the authority over anything except for what Allah allows and has willed tabarak wa ta'ala and likewise the angels they do not share any partnership whatsoever in the dominion in the kingdom of Allah azawajal they do not share partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is not in need of them and Allah created them for wisdom and He has honored them and allowed them to perform certain uh, deeds by His command and by His will and this is an honor for them but rather Allah is Al-Ghani, Al-Hamid, Al-Ali, Al-Kabir Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is Al-Ghani, He is the one who is rich subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is not in need of anyone whatsoever He is not in need, He has no need for anyone whatsoever subhanahu wa ta'ala ta He has no need whatsoever for anything from His creation he is the one who is worthy of all praise. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high and the most great. So the angels, they do not help the they, they do not help Allah Azza wa Jalla, they do not aid him. And Allah, he does not need them. And uh, the tasks that they perform by the permission of Allah, this is an, an honor for them that Allah has bl has blessed them with and honored them with. Bil ibad muqramun. And likewise, the angels, they do not have any ability to intercede except with the permission of Allah Azza wa Jalla. So therefore they're not worthy of worship. And likewise the angels like the rest of the creation, they cannot benefit nor can they harm anything whatsoever except with the permission and the, com and the command and the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. They are under His rule and they are under His regulation and His decree and His command. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. And likewise they, uh, they fall into fear and they are affected by fear. And this is clear in this verse and likewise in the hadith that the author he will mention. Rahimahullah ta'ala that also they sometimes become unconscious and their minds go away and this happens to them sometime it's mentioned that they uh, they fall unconscious in prostration whenever the revelation is revealed so this is all an indication that they are not worthy of worship and likewise they surrender and they submit and they they bow down in humility and obedience humbly before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of these affairs here, they're clear clarification that the angels, they're not worthy of worship. And in reality, one could uh, ask about these affairs that have been mentioned, that these are all clear evidences and proofs, cutting proofs that everything or anything that is described with any one of these attributes, then he's not worthy of worship. The people who worship others besides Allah, we can ask them about any one of these attributes. Does, uh, is, is he created? Oh, how can you worship someone that's created? Does he create anything? No, not except for with Allah. The, then he's not worthy of worship. Is he, is he allowed to benefit or help by himself? Does he have a portion of the dominion that he owns alone himself? Or does he have any share? Is he a helper with Allah? Does he have any share or partnership in the dominion whatsoever? Or maybe he's a helper. All of this, if the, if the, if the thing that is being worshipped is described with these attributes and characteristics, then it's not worthy of worship. And this is clear. Then it's not worthy of worship. And this is this is clear so the author rahimahullah ta'ala he has mentioned this chapter to clarify this issue and he has mentioned this verse in this manner and the understanding and the explanation of this verse has come in the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the author he mentions and he says wa fi sahih 
an Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu an an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anahu qal and in the authentic collection and what is being referred to here this hadith is in Sahih Bukhari and from the narration of Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ الْأَمْرَ فِي السَّمَاءِ ضَرَبَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ بِأَجْنِحَتِهَا خُضْعَانًا لِقَوْلِهِ خُضْعَانًا in one, one wording وَخُضْعَانًا خُضْعَانًا وَخُضْعَانًا نَعَمْ لِقَوْلِهِ that uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says whenever Allah has ordained some affair in the heaven the angels beat their wings in obedience to his statement نَعَمْ they beat their wings in obedience to his statement the angels, whenever uh, Allah He decrees and ordains an affair in the heaven, then the angels they beat their wings in obedience to His statement. Nam ka'annu silsilatun ala safwan yanfuzuhum dhalika hatta ida fuzia an qulubihim qalu ma da qala rabbukum qalu alhaq wa huwa aliyul kabir. Nam and then uh, the the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam He said that His statement it sounds like a chain dragged over a rock. This is what the revelation sounds like, uh, and, and, and is mentioned by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the his statement, which sounds like a chain, a, a chain dragged over a rock, and the and the sound it reaches them, it reaches into them, and then they're afraid, and it terrifies them, and it, and it scares them, and they become afraid whenever they hear the statement of Allah azza wa jal, out of veneration and magnification and honor and glory of Allah azza wa jal, whenever they hear. Whenever the angels they hear his statement, they become afraid and, and they become uh, frightful and they are scared. Nam, so the sound reaches them. Nam yanfudu, yanfudu hum that the sound it reaches them and causes them to to fall into fear. Nam, so much so that whenever the fear is banished from their from their hearts, they say, "What is it that your Lord has said?" And they say, "The truth, and He is the Most High, and the Most Great." And he is the most high, the most great. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, فَيَسْمَعُهَا مُسْتَلِكُ السَّمْعِ وَمُسْتَلِكُ السَّمْعِ حَكَذَا بَعْضُهَا فَوْقَ بَعْضُ And he said that, uh, that then he who gains a hearing by stealing, meaning the devils and the shayateen, that they, they steal, they listen, and they try to eavesdrop and hear some of the revelation when we'll hear Allah's statement. And those who gain a hearing by stealing, and they stand one and over and over like this. And then he says, وَصَفَهُ سُفْيَانِ بِكَفِّهِ فَحَرَّفَهَا وَبَدَّدَ بَيْنَ أَصَابِعِهِ This part here is Mudraj. That uh, one of the narrators, Sufyan ibn Uyayna, he died in 198, he mentioned that he turned his hands sideways and he separated between his fingers to clarify. And he, that the, 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 the devils that tried to listen and gain uh, uh, some information from the revelation when it's revealed that they stand one or they climb or they're one on top of the other, that they are on one on top of the other. Naam, and he mentioned that he put his hand sideways and spread his fingers apart to, to make an example of how they are, the devils and the shayateen, that they are one above the other like this. Sufyan, to illustrate this, he spread his fingers of his right hand and placed them one over the other horizontally. Naam. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَيَسْمَعُ الْكَرِمَةِ فَيُرْقِيهَا إِلَى مَنْ تَحْتَهُ ثُمَّ يُرْقِيهَا الْآخَرِ إِلَى مَنْ تَحْتَهُ So one of them will hear a statement. He will hear a statement from the the revelation and he will cast it to the one who was below him, who will cast it to the one who was below him. حَتَّى يُرْقِيهَا عَلَى لِسَانِ السَّاحِرَ أَوْ الْكَاهِنَ until the last one will, will will cast it onto the tongue of the magician or the the fortune teller. فَرُبَّمَا أَدْرَكُهُ الشِّهَابُ قَبْرَ أَنْ يُلْقِيَهَا And possibly the shihab and the, the flaming fire, meaning from the the shooting stars, and the, the, the shihab and the flaming fire will, sometimes will catch him before he's even ca able to cast that uh, statement to the sahir or the kahin. وَرُبَّمَا أَلْقَاهَا قَبْلَ أَنْ يُدْرِكَهُ And maybe he will cast it before he's able to catch him. Maybe he will cast that statement and he, onto the tongue of the sahir. And the, the kahin before the shihab catches him and burns him. He says, فَيَكْذِبُ مَعَهَا مِيَةَ كَذْبَ At this time the sahir or the kahin, he will, he will add to this statement of truth 
100 lies. He will add to the statement of truth 100 lies. فَيُقَالُوا أَلَيْسَ قَدْ قَالَ لَنَا يَوْمَ كَذَا وَكَذَا يعني كذا وكذا. He said, did he not say to us on this day this and this? فَيُصَدَّقُوا بِتِقَ الْكَرِمَةَ أَلَتِ السُّمِعَتْ مِنَ السَّمَاءَ So the kahin or the sahir, he will be believed because of this one statement. And he didn't he not tell us, and he will mention some things that are truthful, and then he will add to that 100 lies. And then because of that one statement that is truthful, he will be believed in the statements that he mentions. They will say, didn't he say this to us this one day, and it was the truth, and it was correct in this matter. The people of falsehood have uh, misguided the people, have misguided the people. The point from this evidence is to clarify that the angels, they are not worthy of worship. The point from this narration is to clarify that the angels and to give the explanation of that ayat, that this is the angels, that whenever they hear the revelation, that they strike their wings and they hit their wings uh, uh, in submission and surrender and uh, humbleness before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in obedience and that they fall into fright. Likewise, the author, he clarifies in the next narration as well the, this issue. And he mentions an nawas ibn Sam'an radiallahu anhu. قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ إِذَا رَضَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَنْ يُوحِيَ بِالْأَمْرُ If Allah Azza wa Jalla, He wants to reveal a command, تَكَلَّمَ بِالْوَحِي That He will speak with the revelation. أَخَذَتِ السَّمَاوَاتُ مِنْهُ رَجْفَ That the heavens, they will shake whenever the revelation is being revealed. And at the speech of Allah Azza wa Jalla, أو قَالَ الرِّعَ أو قَالَ الرَّعَدَ أَنْ شَدِيدًا يعني it he speaks with the revelation. He says, خَوْفًا مِنَ اللَّهِ This is all out of the fear of Allah. Allahu Akbar. He said, صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ فَإِذَا سَمِعَ ذَلِكَ أَهْنُ السَّمَاوَاتِ سُعِقُوا وَخَرُّوا لِلَّهِ سُجَدَى That if the people of the heavens, the inhabitants of the heavens, referring to the angels, they hear this, they hear the revelation being spoken, سُعِقُوا وَخَرُّوا لِلَّهِ سُجَدَى That they will, سُعِقُوا يعني السعق that they will they will be they will fall unconscious in prostration that they will fall unconscious to angels the great angels this great creation created from light and how the size of them and the likes and their status and rank they fall unconscious whenever the revelation whenever Allah he speaks the revelation out of fear from Allah so and out of honor and respect for Allah subhanahu Wa ta'ala in veneration. Ta'zeema lillahi azza wa jal wa haybatan lahu. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Yukunu awwala man yarfa'u ra'sahu Jibreel. The first of them to raise their heads from this situation is Jibreel. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Fayukallimuhu lahu min wahihi bima arad. And then Allah will speak to him. Allah will speak to him with his revelation, with that which he wills. And that which he wants, subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ يَمُرُّ جِبْرِيلَ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ And then Jibreel, he will pass by the angels. كُلَّمَا مَرَّ بِالسَّمَاءٍ سَأَلَهُ مَلَائِكَتُهَا Every time he passed by one uh, heaven, the angels of that heaven will ask him, مَاذَا قَالَ رَبُّنَا يَا جِبْرِيلَ What did our Lord say, O Jibreel? فَيَقُولُ جِبْرِيلُ قَالَ الْحَقُ هُوَ الْعَلِيُ الْكَبِيرُ then the, the Jibreel, he will say that he said, Allah, he said the truth and he is the most high and the most great. قَالَ فَيَقُولُونُ كُلُّهُمْ مِثْلَ مَنْ قَالَ جِبْرِيلٌ So he mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that all of them, all of the angels, they will say just like what Jibreel said. And he قَالَ الْحَقُّ وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْكَبِيرُ فَيَنْتَهِ جِبْرِيلٌ بِالْوَحْيِ إِلَى حَيْثُ أَمَرَهُ اللَّهِ So Jibreel, at this time, he would descend uh, with the wahi into where Allah has commanded him. And to, and into whichever prophet that Allah has sent to whatever to wherever Allah has commanded him. To wherever Allah has commanded him. So we see the benefit from this chapter is to clarify that nothing besides Allah is worthy of worship from the creation. That nothing is worthy of worship, not even from the nearest of the angels, and nor a messenger that has been sent with revelation. None of them, none of them are worthy of worship. Rather, the only one who is worthy of worship is the creator of the angels. 
and the provider and sustainer of the angels, and the one who has authority and command over the angels and likewise over the prophets and messengers. This is the one who was worthy of worship alone. And after this, the author, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentioned Masail and uh, benefits with, with regards to these evidences. And inshallah, we'll take those in the free and the class to come. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, hadha wa sallallahu ala nabiyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.